Welcome back, everybody. This is our Algebra 2 Exponential Functions, Lesson Number 3, Exponential Function Basics Home Review, Part 3. And again, if you didn't get a chance to, make sure you watch Parts 1 and 2, where we talked about our basic functions, basic exponential functions and all, and the properties and did some work with them. The part two, we graphed, sketched uh, graphs of a couple exponential functions, one which decreasing, one increasing. We talked about how if your base is between zero and one, we have a decreasing function. And when your base is greater than one, then we have an increasing function. For here, part three, we have start with question number seven. The Fahrenheit temperature of a cup of coffee, F, starts at the temperature 185 degrees. It cools down according to exponential function f of m is equal to 113 times 1 half raised to the m over 20 plus 72, where m is the number of minutes it has been cooling. That's a crazy function, but that's basically, in this case, the function based upon the number of minutes after a certain time. And so part a says, how do you interpret the statement f of 60 equals 86? Well, we'll interpret that with the following. We'll type this out. Uh, here we go. And so, since we're plugging in 60 here, okay, the 60, the 60 is the number of minutes, so it means after 60 minutes, the temperature of the coffee, comma, the temperature, oops, sorry about that, of the coffee, coffee, will be 86 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll just put an F. Okay. Now, why is that true? Because we have in this case the X value is the M value is 60. That's minutes. And in this case this is the F value with the temperature in Fahrenheit. So this is our answer. After 60 minutes, the temperature of coffee will be 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Part B, determine temperature of the coffee after one day using your calculator. Okay, so we know that our function will be uh, 113 times 1 half to the m over 20 plus 72. So what we want to do is figure out how many minutes are there in a day. Okay, well, oops, let's do it to our calculator. And so we know that there are 60 minutes in an hour. And there are 24 hours in a day times 24. And so our number of minutes will be 1,440. And so our function, if we remember, uh, if I remember, I wrote it down here <laughs> someplace, but we can always go back. It will be 113, okay, times 1 half, 1 over 2, close parenthesis, raised, now this is good to an X point here, raised. Now the M value was one, we said 1,440. But we're dividing that by, I believe in this case, 20. And then we're going to add 72 to this. So we're plugging in the number of minutes for a day, which is 1,440 into our function, and we get, in this case, 72 degrees. Well, 72 degrees, that's strange. That's very, very strange. I wonder why it's the case, because we know 13 times 1 half raised 1,044 or divided by 20 is not equal to zero. But I believe the calculator is definitely trying to round things off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this equation here, and I'm gonna delete the plus 72 and see what we get here. Delete, delete, delete. And so, oh, okay. So we take a look at this. 2.3928608 e to the negative 20. That's really mean, e to the negative 20 means times times 10 to the negative 20, All right? So I'll just take, write this down. Two, four, two, three decimal places, so three decimal places, 2.393 times 10 to the negative 20. And we'll go back to our question here. And so here, uh, what would temperature be? Well, we see in this case we have, you know, we have, we said 2.393, we estimated in this case, times 10 to the negative 20, 
plus 72. Now, if we had to write this out, this would be 72.12345678910112131415161789293 and there were some more decimals afterwards. This would be the temperature of the coffee, which at this point we're going to round off to about approximately 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? And what do you think this temperature represents about the physical situation? Well, how come it didn't go below? With, I mean, this portion here, this portion here was practically zero, right? Almost zero. But this portion stayed the same. So what was 72 percent? Well, that would probably be, okay, the 72 in the in the formula would represent the room temperature. Now, why is the room temperature? Because in this case, the temperature of the coffee cannot be colder than the temperature of the room. And so that's sort of like the, we talk about this being also almost the asymptote, if you will, if that it approaches those particular value, but it doesn't really cross it. It can't get colder than 72 degrees because the coffee can never get colder than the room itself, unless you, of course, you add ice in this case, but we left it alone. We left it alone here. So, so we'll take a look at the entire page here. This is question number seven. Now, number eight, I'll make this page width. And so we have two functions, y equals a times b times b the x and y equals c times d the x. So the graph below shows two exponential functions with real number constants a, b, c, and d. Given the graphs, only one pair of constants shown could be equal, not necessarily have to be equal, but could be equal. Determine which pair could be equal. Okay, well, let's begin with these coordinates here. This coordinate and this coordinate. So the top coordinate, which follows along with y equals a to b the x, this would be 0 comma a. And why is that the case? Well, here this top coordinate is going to be 0 comma a, which x equals 0, b to 0 power is equal to 1. So 1 times a, there are a value. So 1 times a is a, so it's when x is 0, y is a. For the second coordinate, I'll circle it blue for this function, we would have zero comma C. And again, in this case, we see that we, um, again, when when uh, when X equals zero, D to zero power is one, and therefore C times one is, well, just C. Notice that they're not the same value, and therefore we cannot have A and C being equal to each other. If they were equal to each other, they would cross each other at the X, at the Y axis, it being the, having the Y, same Y intercept. Okay, now let's take a look at B and D. Okay, B and D here. Well, we see in this case, well, let's do I type this out though. So we'll say that A, uh, oh, A and C cannot be equal, cannot be equal because they are not intersecting intersecting on the y-axis okay now for b and d well since our first function b b must be b has to be between zero whoops not 90 zero and one because the exponential function, because the function is decreasing. And so we talk about in this case that when a function, an exponential function is decreasing, the b value is between zero and one. And then d, d must be greater than one because the function is increasing. Therefore, because of this, well, B and D cannot be equal. You can't have a number between zero and one and greater than one at the same time. The only possible pair that could be equal are A and B. Now, 
we don't know what's uh, what the value of a is, you know, but we know probably a a has to be a will probably have to be uh, less than less than one. And so it's possible that our, our wiring steps could be less than one. So this is the only one that could possibly be true. Okay. Question number nine. Explain why the equation below cannot have real solutions. If you need to, graph both sides of the equation using calculator to visualize the reasoning. Okay. So one of the things we know is that three to the x has to be greater than zero. No matter what value we have, three to the x has to be greater than zero. And therefore, if we have a number greater than zero, plus five, okay, has to be greater than five. Why? Because three to the x can be, can be a very small, tiny value, but it will always be greater than zero. Because you take any, any positive number raised to any power, it must be greater than zero. And so to show this graphically, okay, let's go to y equals, we're going to have set 3 to the x, 3 raised to the x, and then plus 5. And then this y2 will be just 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit uh, zoom standard, zoom 6, and we'll see in this case that the blue graph will definitely, will never intersect. We'll just kind of flatten out at value of five. We'll never cross that, keep, keep increasing. While y equals two is just always below the 3dx plus five, okay? So our, our response would be in this case, three to the x plus five, three to the x, x power plus five, will always be greater <laughs> greater than 5. Because of this, it will never equal to 2. And I want to stress big letters, never equal to 2. Okay? And so that's our reasoning for here. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this has been helpful. I mean, the logistics behind this all, in this case, and you can take a look at 3dx, you know, you know, even, even at x, with x is a negative 100, it does get close to zero, but it's never negative. And so we add that to five, we're always gonna have a number greater than, greater than five. And so a number greater than five cannot be equal to two. That's sort of how it works out here. So, so I hope this is helpful. So, uh, and, you know, I know it's kind of a strange type of way of looking at this, but we kind of reason behind this case that our x are these, uh, these numbers to a certain power, uh, especially in this case, the base is a positive number or, you know, this case, you know positive number, you're never going to have a number less than zero. Okay. All right. I hope this has been uh, helpful for you guys with these questions here. This is going to be the end of our part three. And uh, again, please make sure you catch part one and two. And uh, if you found this helpful, give a like, give this video a like, really appreciate that and also. And leave questions or comments in the comment section below so I can know like, hey, if you made a mistake, Mr. Gong, or maybe why is this further, and ask more questions about this. Maybe do some, some more videos to support this and all. Okay, so I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So until that time, take care of yourselves and be safe. Thank you so much.